Okay, we're back for the third part of our video. In the third part, we're going to focus on the user interface of the app because if you take a look, this is kind of bare and we really want to be able to have a form in here to input this and to have a list. And what we're going to do to kind of um, make that happen is we're going to use Nux UI. We can read here what it says. Its goal is to provide everything related to UI when building a Nux app. This includes components, icons, colors, dark mode, but also keyboard shortcuts. It's built with headless UI and Tailwind CSS, so you can add additional styles using Tailwind classes um, to the code that you write. This is what we're going to use. It has a, if we scroll over to the elements, it has the forms, which we'll use for the input form. And then it also has this data table that we'll use to kind of list the thoughts that we get from the database. So this will be what we're going to cover in this video. But um, I needed to kind of clean up some things from the last video. And the big one was I wasn't setting the type of the object that was returned. And so I'm doing it right here now by after I do get all thoughts, I set it to as thoughts. So if I hover over, you can see the type of the object is thoughts that gets returned. So when I am back in my app view and we get our thoughts back and we look at our thought response, we can see in here is this is the thoughts that come back and it's an object and it's an array. And then when we're trying to access it up here inside of um, our template, we hover over our data item we can see that we're getting this ref, which is a th array of thoughts objects. So that was the uh, type cleanup that we needed to do there. So let's now go over to, well, we're here in our app already. And since we already have this list of thoughts here, let's start by trying to create a table for that using uh, Nux UI. But I suspect there's some setup we need to do for Nux UI. So let's go take a look at that. So here we are, let's scroll up, installation, let's copy and get this installed. Okay, now it's installed. Um, let's go back and we need to add the module to our Nux config. And that's it. Now we can use components and composables in our app. We install Nux Tailwind CSS and Nux color mode. We're not, we're not going to do anything with color mode here. I already have IntelliSense set up in my application, so I should be good to go. So the first thing that we want to do is, let's scroll through this, is a layout. And so we're going to use this container layout for our application. So we're just going to wrap everything inside of a container. So we'll go up to the top. Right now it's a div. What was it U container? Okay, so we have this set to U container. Let's see what this looks like. All right, so looks like we kind of got a little padding to the side, nothing to the top, but um, so let's just add a little margin to the top. And this is where we can use our regular type scripts. Uh, sorry, regular tailwind. I can say class and margin top, and we'll say six. Go back and see what we get. All right, so we got a little bit of margin at the top there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this with our data table. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make an assumption. I was gonna try and guess, but let's uh, go here and let's scroll down data table. And we're gonna, let's see. Let's scroll down. We can define the columns, but let's just take the out of the box columns first. Let's just pass the data in and see what we get. So we're gonna say U table. We're gonna copy this. Let's go back over, paste our table in. We have no columns yet, so we're gonna take that out and we're gonna set our rows to be this. Okay, that's what I wanted. And you can see here, we get this basic table with the ID, the thought, and kind of my specific mood. Now, what you can do with the table also is that you see how it allows you to define the columns, and so you can kind of rename things. So let's do, let's just take a columns, and we're, you know, we're just doing 
we're ma making an artificial kind of, I don't want to say excuse, but kind of some artificial styling here because we don't really need to style the columns because they're already pretty straightforward. But we will go ahead and do that. And so we'll leave ID to uppercase ID. The next one is thought. And we'll change that to my thought. And then the last one is mood. And we'll change that to my mood. And then we don't need these last two. Let's go back up here. And we have rows. And then now here, columns equals columns. And let's save this, go back. And now you can see it says my thought, my mood. We have that set here. And so that's how you can kind of style what is on the uh, label for the column. That's pretty awesome. So now let's go back and we can remove this and start to put our form in. Actually, there's another, hold on. There's another component called a card that we can do to kind of put a little padding around everything. Where did that go? So, and it has a header, it has head, space for header than the body. So we're gonna copy this card. Let's go back to our code and let's put it right here for now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our table in for the body. And then for the header, inside its template, we'll put some sort of title in here. Let's say H3 and we'll say tracking my thoughts. And so now we have this nice card that kind of holds my thoughts in there. And then now what we'll do is we're going to take this same concept and we're going to take a card and we're going to go to the top here. I think we can remove this. And we're going to say save, save a new thought. And that'll be the header. And then in, we're going to remove this here because we don't want this. And what we'll put in here is we're going to put a U form. And I'm missing some properties on that. So let's just quickly slide over. But let's put some style around this because it looks like it's sitting on top of each other. So what we'll do in this is we'll say class. And we'll just say mark, just keep it simple margin four all around the uh, the card and we'll do the same thing down here for my table. So we got a little bit of space around that. So there's my card up top. We'll save new thought. Now let's take a look at the form. It says it's new. So hopefully this is something pretty interesting. Once and we can kind of follow a lot directly from this example that they have here to kind of get things going. First of all, they start out with the ref for the fields for your input. Actually, let's just copy all of this and let's just modify it in place. So let's copy this code for our form. And we're gonna go down here. There's our columns stuff, list everything, form. We'll paste this all down here. Let's give us a little bit more space. It says it doesn't know what a form error is. Um, so let's add that import right here at the top. All right, that fixes that. This is gonna track our error. So what we're gonna say is if our state, so actually let's just call, let's call this thought state. Um, no, thought input. Okay, and our thought input needs a thought and a mood. And what we'll do down here is now we'll say thought input our mood and then we'll copy our thought input and thought and mood and thought mood and thought thought input property mood does not exist on type ref thought undefined mood undefined oh I my bad this let's leave this as state So this is a state that's gonna get passed in from the form. My bad, kind of changing it to thought input. This is form, let's make this something to make sense. Let's call this thought input form. And then down here, this is how the, 
the values from the form get validated by using this validate function that I have up here. And let's put this something around the submit so that it's a little bit clearer. And then that should be it for here inside the application. Let's kind of fix this. So let's say path mood required path, not password thought required. All right, now let's put our form in. So we'll go back and we'll kind of, we'll leverage this existing form. So we'll do it step by step. So first we'll put in our form. So let's replace this with the form. And our state for the form is this uh, thought input. Let's uh, format this to give us some space. And so the validate is this validate function that we have down here. And actually let's wrap, let's put a little space here. Validate, validate form information. And then let's go back up top here. So where did my form go? Let's collapse this card because it's kind of in the way. Um, so we're going to validate. We get our state here. And then on submit, we're going to call our submit function that we created right here. Submit to form. Okay. Now the next step is to add the form fields. And if you can see, they have a form group that wraps each one of the input items. And then you can specify the label inside the form group and then use a V, a v model for the specific um, property that you're tracking. And then at the bottom, they have this use submit button. So let's go inside of my form. We have a thought. And then this is a thought input thought. And we're just going to copy this for our mood. A mood thought input mood. And let's see what our UI looks like. So we got our UI for to enter our values. Okay, next let's go to, we need our button. And let's see, just a submit button. Let's copy that. Uh, sitting on top of that, so let's get us some space there. All right, so we have some space there. And now I think let's change our mood. I think there's another component we can change our mood to select maybe. So let's go down and see select. And it looks like we can. So how are we going to integrate this? Let's select this. And we will go in here and instead of that, we'll say input mood. And then we'll create something called moods. And then let's go down here and around form, let's say const moods equals and then let's go back to TRPC and see what the values were that were acceptable. In your app, you'd probably want to have a query to kind of get what are the acceptable uh, moods, but we'll take it this way. Where did it go? Thoughts, happy, sad, angry. All right, let's see what our UI looks like. Happy, sad, angry. So we can select our mood and then we enter our text. All right, and now let's, I didn't put my error checking in, so let's see, submit. So I should be getting an error here when I click submit, but I'm getting some messages here, let's see. Uh, it, this ref is incorrect because I renamed it yeah, thought input form. Let's go back up here and set this. All right, now let's see what we get. 
Hmm. It's validating it. And why is it not coming back? It's because my button's not in my form. Yeah, that was it. Because my button was not inside of my form. So now it's getting it. So I get my error message saying the thought is required. If I enter my thought, I have no errors and everything's good. So let's just do one last thing. So if we know that we get past the validation, like it says here, let's do something with the that actually with the thought input form, not thought input form, but with my thought input, because this will be where all my updated information is. And so what we want to do is we want to call. So, so now we're finally getting back to the um, TRPC stuff. So we want to go back inside of our router and we want to call this add thought function to save our new thought. So let's go back in here and uh, let's take this code and we'll go inside of our submit and we'll drop it in here and we will change this from get thoughts to add thought and then Sorry, add thought dot mutation mutate. And then in here, it's going to tell us what it needs. It needs a thought. And so we're going to take our input dot value. We're going to say thought. And then our mood. And so since this could be, oh, so the problem that we're running into is up here, thought is set as undefined here. And so the easiest way to solve this is, oh, it's set the undefined because of the way it's checking here. So it's getting it undefined because of what's set here. So let's set our type properly. So let's do this. Let's take the type from our router. There has to be a way to export this. I don't know off the top of my head. I can do some research later. And let's just add it here to our application. So now we have our type. And then let's go here. I'm sorry. Set the type. This is a problem. And so let's just set this the string and then here we'll say if we have no thought or oh, we need to set the state here too I'm going to type here too to thought so we're going to say if I have no thought or if my thought dot length equals zero then throw an error Okay, so then now that addresses the issue with the thought here, because now it'll get what it wants, which is a string. And then now for mood, the problem is it's looking for this type of happy, sad, or whatever. And I did not specify it here on my type. So what I want to do is I should probably change this type everywhere. So this should probably be this. So this should be, all right, so that's the proper type for thought. So let's copy this and put it back uh, inside of my um, router. Okay. So now I have the right type in here. And my mood type string is not assignable to happy, sad, or angry. So mood is. So we can take our mood string and set it as our type of our mood type, which is happy, sad, or angry. There's probably a cleaner way to do this in TypeScript. We can kind of fiddle around with it for now. 
I mean, we could probably fill around and take a bunch of time, but this will get us what we want to make sure that our types are all right. So our thought input is correct. So now when we attempt to mutate, our mood has the right type and our thought has the right type. And then this is our thoughts mute, mutation response, or actually mutate response. And then from our mutate response, we're going to get a success ID. We're going to get a success Boolean and we're going to get an ID number. And it's awesome how we get our types coming back through for everything. It really is pretty amazing. Um, and then we'll just do something simple. We'll just say alert new record added ID dollar sign. Let's put this in for some string interpolation. And so that's going to be our thoughts mutate response dot ID. And then the last thing that we need to do is we want our so notification and then update table. We need to update the data to show the new item that we just saved. And so the way that you do that is on this query, on this thoughts query response, you actually get a refresh method. And so we can come up here and we can say thoughts query response dot refresh. And that will refresh our table for us. So let's give this a run and see what we get. Okay, let's move this out of the way so we can actually see what's going on, see our data. So let's shrink this just a little bit. All right, so thought one, and we're going to stay happy and submit. New record added, refresh. So you got added there in the bottom. That's pretty awesome. Thought. So let's see, can I quickly, one last UI component, let's see if we can, they got an alert in here for us. They have a modal. Yeah, I think this is what I want. I think I need a modal with an alert or a card inside of it. Let's see. So I think we can, let's, let's, yeah, let's quickly try to put this alert in here. And so what we'll do is let's go back up to our template. And so we have our input form. And I just want to put these comments in here to kind of separate things. It's getting kind of crowded in here. Actually, it's not there. This whole card is the input form. And then let's put another placeholder in here for our modal, alert modal. And then we can come in here and say, uh, you modal, and we're gonna put a modal here and we're just going to, let's put a card in there. And we're gonna do the same here. And we'll put the header in there and we'll say, thought saved. And since we haven't done anything, we have our modal sitting here. Let's look at our alert. Let's go to our modal. Modal, we need this ref to say if it's open or close. So let's do this. I'm going to keep this real simple. It's up here. Just add this is, we'll call it alert. Is alert open? We can set it to false. And then we'll use this variable on our alert, or sorry, on our modal. The model, and then we have is alert open and we're going to have in our body here would be the alert message. So actually what we need to do is let's add a little bit more data to our is alert open. We're going to change this to be alert info and then we'll have a ref and we'll say is open and we'll set that to false and then we'll say message and we'll set it to null. I mean to empty string. And then what we'll do is we will go up to our alert open and this will be 
alert info dot is open. And then what we'll put in the body here will be our titles H3. So let's go H4. Then in here, we will just have alert info dot message. All right. And we need to be able to close this alert. So we'll just put it in our footer and we'll say U button close. And then we'll have our click and on click we'll set alert info to false. All right, let's see how this works. And so to actually use it now, we need to go inside of our right here. And this will be alert info. Then we have two values that we need to set. We, we're gonna set this as the message. And then we need to set is open. Sorry, alert info dot value. So that's a notification. We update the table, but even before we do that, after our mutate here, it's clear input. And so we need to set our thoughts back to the default. And so instead of just retyping all this stuff, I'm going to copy this and drop it in here, remove the const, set this to input.value equals, I think I can take this off. Looks like I can't. So actually let's just make it real simple. Can I just do this? There we go. So I cleared the input, display the success, and go on from there. Let me wrap a try catch around here just in case we get an error. And then we would probably want to set a notification. Error adding new record. And then alert info dot message. So alert info dot value dot message. Okay. Um, let's go back to our home and refresh. And testing alert. Thought record saved. I can click to make it go away, but my button should have been there because I need to set my variables back. So why didn't my button show? Let's see. Form group, modal, U button, close. Oh, I, I did it outside of my card. Let me get it back inside of my card. Okay, let's try again. Error adding record. That's interesting. What did I do wrong? So, oh, what am I doing? This should be the message from my error. So E. Okay. And then we set is open. Record added, thoughts mutate. I'm trying to see what my error could be. Try. Refresh should work. Maybe it's this. Let's see. All right, save, closed, angry. Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. Maybe it just need to be refreshed. So it looks like it's adding my records. It's refreshing the database appropriately, and we're getting our confirmation alert done. So we're going to kind of wrap it there. I think this also is going to be the last video in the series. Um, we covered a bunch of things here. We covered TRPC. We covered TypeScript from front to back. We covered Nuxt UI. We covered um, integrating SQLite with better SQLite. Um, so hopefully you found this enjoyable. Please make sure you like, subscribe, share with your friends. Feel free to leave comments on other things you'd like to see. And thank you very much. Bye.